Hey everyone, it's Paul Mayer here with Toolmetrics and Laguna has done a redesign in their table saw product lineup. They've introduced four new saws, the F1, F2, F3, and the F3 comes in two different configurations, so really four different saws in the Fusion table saw lineup. They've sent us a Fusion 1 for evaluation, and what I'm going to do is walk through the saw feature by feature, take key measurements uh, wherever appropriate, give some perspective along the way. Now, hopefully you saw the unboxing video that I did recently on this, uh, but here I'm going to go in more depth um, and, and hopefully give you a perspective of what the saw's capabilities are. Just at a high level where this fits in in the world of table saws, it has a 1.5 horse, 110 volt motor. Uh, it comes equipped with a uh, an overarm uh, dust collection tube, which is very unique, and I'll get into that and kind of show the capabilities around that, uh, but that's one of the kind of the noteworthy uh, items that you'll see on this saw, among other things. Um, so I'll go through feature by feature, share perspectives along the way. Feel free to ask any questions that you have about the saw or my perspective on the saw below, and I'll answer whatever I can. Uh, and so with that, let me go ahead and dive in. Let's start by taking a look at the stuff that you wouldn't normally see, which is underneath the table. First, the one and a half horsepower totally enclosed fan cooled motor means that it's designed for longevity in a hot, dusty environment where the seals prevent dust from getting into the inner workings of the motor and shortening its lifespan. I measure the electrical load on the motor to be in the five to six amp range while running freely and nearly 20 amps under a heavy cutting load. With that, I'd suggest running the saw on a dedicated 20 amp circuit. The trunnion assembly on this saw is substantial compared to other saws in its class. Trunnions are critical because they support the working components of the saw and maintain the blade's orientation to the table, which is critical to maintaining a cut's angle accuracy. If you ever have to realign the blade and miter slot on this saw, you would do so by loosening three bolts on each trunnion mount and making the adjustment. As a hybrid saw, the F1 uses its cast iron table to support the motor assembly. If a hybrid saw is not designed properly, and some aren't, this weight can lead to table sagging. It's clear to see that Laguna has taken measures to prevent this by incorporating heavy webbing into the castings for both the table and the trunnion assembly. These polished steel rods are important too, as they support the trunnion assembly as it raises and lowers in a straight vertical motion. Also, you can see the thoughtful design of the dust collection system, where the dust hose extends up to a shroud that wraps around the blade completely. This is absolutely the right way to collect dust, rather than trying to draw from the entire body of a cabinet. Here you can get a glimpse of the release mechanism for the blade guard or riving knife. It's a large lever with a smooth cam locking motion which makes it easy to operate. Inside the cabinet there is a sealed bottom panel to improve dust collection which means that your dust collector's energy will be focused in a smaller area giving you more effective collection. Up above you find a 27 by 20 cast iron top which gives you a stable solid work surface. I measured this cast iron slab to be within 1.5 thousandth of an inch, which is well within tolerance for a woodworking surface. The extensions are made of stamped steel, which is plenty rigid, but lighter than cast iron, which gives you better job site mobility. The blade guard area has a lot of neat design put into it. The first thing that caught my attention is the integrated dust collection to minimize dust on top of the saw. This type of feature is a $500 upgrade on a lot of saws, but it comes standard with the F1, which to my knowledge is unheard of in this class of saw. I like that the dust collection operates from a single 4-inch vacuum connection in the rear of the saw. And with the dust collector running, you can easily hear the massive airflow around the blade, so you know it's doing the job. Another test is that the cabinet stays relatively dust free during operation, which means less maintenance required underneath the saw. The blade guard has independent side panels for flexible operation, anti-kickback poles to minimize the risk of kickback, and it attaches and detaches easily from the saw with a single release lever. For narrow rips where you can't use the blade guard, you can easily swap it out and install the included riving knife. 
The throat plate is solid and easy to remove with a simple locking mechanism. Blade changes are simple with an arbor locking mechanism that allows you to change blades using a single wrench, which is very convenient. The arbor is long enough to support the use of a three-quarter inch dado stack, whereas lots of saws in this class max out at a half inch and some don't support dado at all. For cabinet making, this is a very important detail. The miter gauge is substantial with nice, accurate adjustability and rides in a standard 3 quarter by 3 8 inch miter slot, which means that the third party jigs and accessories that you have will work just fine here. The fence on this saw is a standout in its class. It's heavy, solid, and rigid, and I measure virtually no run out across the machined aluminum surface, which is partially due to the steel frame that reinforces behind it. It also doesn't flex much under several pounds of applied stress, which means consistent cut quality. This fence reminds me of an aftermarket upgrade. It offers 30 inches of rip capacity, which covers just about any ripping application. The T-square design makes it easy to take on and off the saw. The rail design allows it to slide easily into position and the smooth cam mechanism locks the fence securely. It moves easily, hovering with a slight gap over the table surface to reduce friction. The fence rail has a split on the left side of the blade, which means that you'll rarely pass over it with the fence. And when you do pass over it, it glides smoothly thanks to the registration pins that keep it aligned. On the sides of the cabinet, you'll find onboard storage for the splitter, wrench, and miter gauge, as well as hooks to store the fence securely when it's not in use. There's also a removable panel that allows you to access the inner workings of the saw for maintenance purposes. The blade can be raised and tilted using the large comfortable hand wheels on the front and side of the saw. The blade movement is steady and solid on the threaded rod assembly. The saw comes standard with a full kerf 40 tooth carbide tip blade, which is a great tooth geometry for a combination of ripping and cross cutting. I found the F1 to have plenty of power in ripping two inch thick hardwoods such as walnut, maple, and oak. You're going to want to slow down your feed rate when ripping stock this thick, but it is definitely up to the task. Cross cuts are easy with the standard miter gauge and the stock blade gives you great cut quality on a variety of materials. I measured sound output from this saw in the 80 decibel range, which is quite respectable for a table saw, but with any saw, you're still going to want to wear hearing protection. Just about everything that you would want comes standard with this saw. There are a few options, however, including the wheel kit that you see here to make the saw mobile, and there's also a thin kerf riving knife as well as special inserts for zero clearance and dado operations. All right, to kind of net things out, this saw is a very feature-rich saw with a couple of really key attributes. First, the integrated dust collection, collecting dust above the table, as well as wrapping around the blade to really optimize the dust collection. That's really unheard of in this class of saw. The fence, that really suggests an aftermarket upgrade, uh, and the totally enclosed fan cool motor, which is a very nice premium type motor in this class of uh, table saw. So I think Laguna has done a nice job with this. Uh, please let me know if you have questions down below. I'll answer anything that I can. And please subscribe to the Toolmetrics channel where you can find more woodworking, wood turning, and DIY videos. Hope you found this useful. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. And thanks so much for watching.